Hello, I'm Glenn Toby. I'm a Spring Forest Chicago master and a psychotherapist. The topic of this five minute talk today is on protection. So, protection. So, this mask is designed for many, many things, currently because of the virus. The idea of wearing the mask is a layer of protection for the virus, for the droplets, for the whatever it is that the virus is made of, its own personality, its own persistence. It's a layer of protection. It's not an absolute uh, uh, protection, so to speak, but it's a layer in which to protect yourself. The other side of the wearing of this uh, mask is so that I do not uh, infect someone else. So whatever it might be inside of me that's a part of the virus gets, it gets trapped or detained or deflected from going out to someone else. That's the theory of it. Not everyone agrees with that. So not to get into the right or wrong, yes, it's true or not true, but the function of the mask protect me and to protect others. So now if you look at this from another perspective, like if you had a kaleidoscope, you know, you gave it a little bit of a twist, now I'm seeing something different. So in your own life, the way you're living your life, where does the protection come in from the rest of life coming into you? Or where is the way you're living your life is not what? Infecting others. So without this being connected to the virus, just the way in which you live your life is going to impact others and the way in which you protect yourself will impact others. So what you hold out, what you mask away, what you shut down inside yourself, all that will affect everyone else around you. So then your choice is, what's the need for protection? Now with a virus, the idea is it can attack humans that have a, a weaker inner condition, some other thing going on that the virus by itself doesn't always do the dirty work. So the same is true inside of my life and your life. You know, the weaknesses that we have inside of us, the conditions of, of fear that live inside of us. So we wear the protection so we don't want to have that already we know are insecure or inadequate or all those human condition things. So then we want to maybe protect ourselves maybe more than we need to. But the other, the opposite thing is, do I wish to infect others, not so much with the virus, but the way in which I live my life? So in one sense, we're all models of what we do to other people. So like harsh or authoritarian parents, you know, really are given permission when their children to, to grow up to be harsh and authoritarian. Leaders like that too in lots of different fields. The harshness give permission. So whatever way I which I behave, so to speak, I'm giving other people to behave in the same way that I have behaved. So when my children have asked me when I was, they were growing up, you know, can we behave like you? Because daddy, didn't you do this? Didn't you do that? In one way, that's true. I did do some things. And therefore, I kind of gave permission now that other people can do the same thing as well. Hopefully, they're smarter than I have been. But, but we have, by the way we live our life, are given permission to other people to duplicate the behavior that we have. So from this point on, how do you wish to you know, infect others? You know, I heard uh, you know, in, in the social uh, unrest going on, uh, this phrase from Jesus, you know, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And sometimes I think that's what we do. We just don't love ourselves very well. So in the not loving of ourselves, now we're infecting others with our, you know, hatred, with our, with our uh, prejudices, with our, you know, unrest that lives inside of us. Therefore, giving other people also to have permi permission to do the same thing. So whether we protest in peaceful or protest with violence, we give permission to others to duplicate the behaviors that we have. So then it goes to what kind of life do you want to have? How do you want to send that information out to the world? How do you want to protect yourself? And how do you want to give out to others? So that's what I love about Spring Far Shikang. The teaching and the practice, the meditations, the movements, really move inside me to see my life, to see mistakes I've made, and to strengthen my inner life so that I can be protected by harshness out there. I don't have to behave like others, but also I cannot infect other people in a way that's not, from my point of view, healthy. 
Thank you for listening.